All right. So hello and welcome to an exciting event we have planned today where we are invited actually inside the Zoom classroom of Gia Batty's Creative Writing Club. So two of our graduate authors who I'll introduce shortly are joining the students and sharing about their experiences as writers. So thanks to Ms. Batty for letting us peek into the novel's hybrid classroom. Uh, first, I will introduce my classmate, Mark Palanzak, who graduated with me in 99. Mark is an award-winning writer, editor, and teacher. Mark's writing is experimental, absurdist, and magical. His short stories and essays have appeared in numerous publications, and his first book, Pop, is a genre-defying hybrid work that blurs the lines between fiction and memoir. His recent story collection, which I just purchased, The OK End of Funny Town, won the BOA Short Fiction Prize and has been praised by the Boston Globe, Kirkus, Booklist, Literary Hub, and BuzzFeed Books. In 2011, Mark co-founded the unique educational literary magazine, Draft, the Journal of Process, which showcases early drafts alongside final drafts of stories, poems, essays, and screenplays from acclaimed writers. The magazine is regularly taught in over 50 colleges, universities, and writing programs. Mark also co-produced Draft's podcast series, The Failsafe, conducting interviews with successful authors about their creative failures. A graduate of University of Arizona's MFA program in fiction, Mark teaches writing, literature, and podcasting at the Berkeley College of Music in Boston, and he lives in Salem. Nina McLaughlin, who graduated two years ahead of Mark and me in 1997, is the author of Wake Siren, a retelling of Ovid's metamorphosis told from the perspective of the female figures transformed. Summer Solstice, a short book length essay on the summer season, highly recommend to read that in June, and the acclaimed memoir Hammerhead, The Making of a Carpenter, which I just finished in December and also highly recommend. Formerly an editor at the Boston Phoenix, she worked for nine years as a carpenter and is now a books columnist at the Boston Globe. Her work has appeared on or in the Paris Review Daily, The Believer, Agni, American Short Fiction, the Los Angeles Review of Books, the Wall Street Journal, Meat Paper, and elsewhere. She carves spoons and lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So thanks so much to Nina and Mark for being here, and I'll turn it over to Miss Batty. Um, I'm going to just keep letting more people into this event. It's making me so happy. I wanted to welcome you all here. This is actually a meeting of the Creative Writing Club, which um, is really a student-led club. And I, and I want to turn things over to the student who actually created the club um, to, to do the official welcome to Creative Writing Club. So go ahead, Catherine. Yeah. Hi guys, thank you so much for being here. This means so much to all of us to get to talk with actual real writers. It's awesome. Um, I'll just say a little bit about what Creative Writing Club is and what we do. So we are the club on campus for students interested in exploring and improving their writing across genres. We do workshops, we do daily prompts, and we just try to have a good time. Sometimes we'll do competitions. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. And I think we're ready to get started. We're really excited. Um, and I should have said that I have been, I, I am an English teacher at Nobles and I've been at Nobles for, I think, 13 years. Um, and I've been um, working with um, students and their writing re really the whole time. So I will, I think, Kate, should I just uh, turn things over to um, Nina and Mark at this point? Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks, Gia. Great. Um, thank you all for having us here. Um, this is a real, a real treat. I'm excited to, uh, to see you guys. I'm excited to chat with Mark here. Um, I saw a few faces in here that I recognize. <laughs> oh my God, this is so great. Good to see you. Uh, welcome. Great to see you. Thanks for coming. I'm really excited to do this. Awesome. Um, Mark, we, we chatted a bit yesterday and we're old friends um, uh, and uh, talking sort of about the writing life, we were sort of thinking about like as, as high school kids, what we would have wanted to know about kind of what it would be to have a life as a writer. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about when you sort of knew that this was what you wanted to do with your life? I think that's a great question. Um, yeah, I think, um, well, 
I really, I really do think that the beginning of all of the stuff that I do did start at Nobles. So it's great to be back here talking about it. I went to Nobles in middle school. Um, and I remember that there was um, a drama class with Eden Smith that I took and there were plays that you could do and there were after school projects you could do. And one of the things that we did in the drama class was that we wrote a script and then filmed it. And it was the most exciting thing to see other people like reading your work and then it's showing up somewhere. And I just, I just really dove into that. And it was incredible to me to see that that was actually called class homework. Cause it was just, I was just obsessed with it. And then Nobles had um, after school projects where I did, I worked with like faculty writing a short play and then doing short story writing and then um, creative writing class in my senior year. So I really got the bug of doing that creative stuff in middle school and high school. And then I think I knew I wanted to do it at college when I met some of the faculty that were teaching at Skidmore College, um, Stephen Milhauser and Catherine Davis being two writers who I loved who were teaching there. And I looked at like the stuff that they did and I looked at the, the like them teaching and leading workshops and I was like, I have to figure out a way to make that my life. <laughs> I have to figure out a way to make this happen. Um, so I think it was a gradual progression that probably wouldn't have happened without those early experiences with creativity at Nobles in doing writing projects. Um, but definitely like at college, senior year, I was applying to MFA programs. So by the time I was done with college, I was like, I just got to keep doing this. What about you, Nina? <laughs> um, I guess in some ways, similarly, I, I knew I wanted to write, um, well, actually, maybe earlier, I guess it was like, it was when I was a kid, I was in third grade and I actually remember the moment we had had, we'd had to write um, small books and I wrote a book about a giant um, and I kept using the word big, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and my teacher came over to me with the, th the thesaurus and was like, wow, Nina, like you can use many other words, for example, immense. And I remember just sort of like lighting up, sort of thinking, oh my gosh, wow, language is amazing, storytelling is amazing. And it was sort of like that moment, uh, sort of like what you were saying, like, I, this is what I wanna do. Um, and so similarly, had a lot of great experiences at Nobles, had some really fantastic teachers, had some really, I feel like I really learned how to write uh, at Nobles. Um, in college, I studied English and classics um, at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, and then right after college, got a job at this newspaper. And so um, it was sort of, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was that sort of drive similarly maybe to you, Mark, of just like, this is, this is the way I want the shape of my life to be. Yeah. And I do think that there's a, there's a lot that goes into it instead of just like writing. So I guess Nat, like when, when I was in high school, when I was thinking about this stuff, when I was in college and looking at professors um, and reading stuff, I didn't, I had an idea that was wrong about the way a writer's life looked on a daily basis and what the work of being a writer actually meant because I've only learned that over the past, I've been learning it for the past 20 years about how to actually do this thing. Um, what are you doing day to day? Like how do you decide on your projects and then when you have your writing projects, how are you working on them? How much time what does it look like for you sure. on your daily basis? Yeah, I mean, it, it really, it varies day to day. I have this globe column that I write every week. So that's sort of like the, every Friday I write this column. So that's the one sort of structured thing that I have. Um, right now I'm sort of in the beginning stages of two other bigger, longer book projects. Um, and so right now it's the sort of like, I find kind of frustrating and agitating stage of it's a lot of thinking work. Um, and so a lot of the work for me right now is honestly just sort of staring at walls and occasionally taking notes. Um, and the way that I sort of have uh, tried to think about, I mean, you know, writing, it's sort of how I orient all of my life around. So it's like every walk that I take or every run that I go on, it's sort of like, how is this feeding the work? Um, so a lot of it right now is quiet. When I'm actually in a project, um, 
I try to work every day. Um, even if it's just for like an hour, you know, if it's like a Sunday afternoon, like it's just like to touch the project every day feels very important to me. Um, but there will be months where I won't write really at all for real. Um, uh, but it's, it's, it's quiet. Sometimes it's very frustrating. Um, uh, and it's also like, I feel so lucky that I get to do this, you know? I mean, it's, it's also the most sort of deeply satisfying and rewarding life I can imagine. How about you? I mean, like what, you have a much more sort of active professional life. <laughs> I teach, yeah. So um, a lot of my daily life as a writer is spent doing teaching. Um, but I do think that a lot of it uh, works together. There's, as you said, if, if you're really into something creative, I think there's probably, I, I work with musicians at Berkeley and there's a lot of like faculty musicians um, and student musicians, obviously. And I think that if you're like in the creative arts professionally in any way, it sort of works with every facet of your life. And I think that the walks you're talking about, definitely, if you're in the middle of a project uh, in even like teaching, the conversations in classrooms start to take on new meaning. Like you, you start picking up and making connections everywhere. Um, there's a little bit of like mania involved with that, I think. Um, but I do uh, set aside certain times of the year where it's an everyday thing. So teaching, you get uh, certain like weeks off, vacation time, and I can plan to hit the ground running when those times pop up and set to a daily schedule. And I am someone who just, I cannot wait for inspiration um, because it's so, I can destroy any of my ideas so quickly that if I waited around for that one thing to come, the next day I would say that's garbage. So working every single day diligently on a project and getting through the days where you say this is garbage <laughs> is part of, the work of it, there are, there's like a ratio of the days that are transcendently joyful when you discover something in writing that propel you through a much uh, bigger amount, a much larger amount of days, number of days that are filled with doubt. So it's a lot, it doesn't look great, you know? When you're sitting there, if someone would have a camera on me while I'm writing every single day, I think that occasionally, occasionally I'd be like, ooh, and that would be it. The rest of it is sort of like <laughs> looking kind of grumpy and upset with it. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah. One, one thing that a, a professor of mine said to me um, was that writing, uh, to be a writer is, is much more about your character than it is your talent, meaning like your own ability to power through that stuff than those, how, how good you are putting stuff down. Because I know a lot of great writers who don't produce anything simply because they don't produce anything. And I think there's a, that like being able to quiet that little demon voice that sits on your shoulder and is like, this sucks, this is garbage, you're so dumb, you're so bad. Those, <laughs> those demon voices, I think they'll always be there. And, and the work of trying to sort of say like, okay, yeah, gotcha. And like continuing on, that to me has been in some ways one of the most important and maybe what you're sort of saying about the character, just being able to sort of say the character behind it, being able to say like, yes, I hear you and like, I'm just gonna ignore it, you know? Um, and I think also in terms of the, the sort of dailiness of it, for example, like, as I just said, this sort of thinking mode right now, um, which can be sort of agitating because it's not producing, I sort of gave myself this daily task of, all right, every day I'm gonna write a thousand words about the Charles River, which is sort of right in my front yard. Um, and it's just this kind of like, just this sort of blast of, really sort of free form anything with a very loose theme of like the Charles River. Um, and it's with the hope that, you know, within the sort of accumulation, there will be nuggets or kernels that I can use and apply down the line. Um, and so that has been a very useful practice for me in terms of just paying attention and getting the mind, those muscles working, um, those muscles of attention and, and putting words together. Um, oh, go, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I write really fast when I do write, and I, I produce a lot of content that I just, but I do it in a very free way, because I know it's, I'm going to delete it. <laughs> I know that I'm going to rework it or edit it, but I have to, I have to get a bunch of material there 
in order to cut it down by like 90% to the, the, the stuff that you're talking about. But that is, that is a comfort to me too, is like when I'm writing stuff, it's, it's a way to combat that critical voice is, well, I, yeah, I know that this isn't that great, but I just need to, I need to get it out because I will whittle it away later. I'm not saying that this is great right now. It's a, it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, but it does look like when you read something amazing that someone just sort of like speaks into the printing press mm -hmm. uh, and that they just have the talent and whatever. And I mean, there's different degrees of talent and different uh, amounts of like work ethic that people have. Um, who is the, the person, the writer, the stories that you go to um, or the people that like influenced you. Let's get, let, let's hear about your influences, Nina. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, uh, so I, I, I had some, at, at Nobles, I, you know, I, I took Latin and took the sort of Greek and Roman civ courses and was really into the, the classics and ended up double majoring in classics. And um, really love Ovid, of its metamorphosis that sort of became a backbone of this first book I wrote about being a carpenter weirdly and it became and your second uh wait what and your second yes I was just gonna say and it's like you know wake siren is like completely based on the metamorphosis so I would say like those sort of the like Greek and Roman myths have been sort of an ongoing um influence in my writing life um uh a writer like Annie Dillard um who I think her ability to kind of, and famously, I think, and my, my favorite book of hers, A Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. I don't know if you guys have read this book. Um, really amazing at sort of aiming her attention at, you know, the like a muskrat or a frog or an insect on a pond and then expanding out into the cosmos, um, which is sort of like that to me is like, that's exactly what I want to be able to do is sort of like have this really beautiful focused attention and then blast out to the mystical. Um, uh, gosh, who else? Um, there's a Scandinavian poet named Inger Christensen who I love, also kind of a weirdo mystic, um, sort of glancing at my bookshelf. Um, you know, I really like Moby Dick, classic book. Um, how about you, Mark? Where's some of your influence? Gandhi, Shakespeare, Mother <laughs> Teresa. Um, these are these are the people that guide me. You seem to be focusing more on writers. <laughs> uh, you know, life is life is more than that. Um, I think I think that really short stories were the thing that made me super interested in writing. Nobles had a good short story class, and uh, we I remember thinking like about English. Um, I loved reading and I loved the English classes, but it seemed like it was going to take a long time to understand writers if they, we had to read all these novels. <laughs> and then we took the short story class and I realized that all these novelists that we were reading in another class also wrote short stories. And I was like, ooh, well, I could get, I could get a really amazing experience of this person's writing in short form. And that really set my mind on fire. And I kept on reading short stories and reading short stories. And then we had to emulate them. So short stories for me are like my first love of literature. And I keep reading short stories and writing short stories. Um, and I would say that like the short story writers that made me think like, oh my God, there's something amazing going on here are um, people like, Dennis Johnson, who wrote Jesus's Son. I don't know if this, this ever comes up in classes. It's a great book that was also made into a movie, a collection of stories. Um, I read um, Italo Calvino. Um, I read uh, Kafka, like Kafka stories, the weirdos. The weirdos really sort of made me think that there was something else going on here. Stephen Milhauser, who, I, who taught at Skidmore and I had, American magical realist, like nothing that happens in there is possible in Murakami. So like when, when stuff started to get like super strange and it wasn't part of the real world, but it was adult literary fiction, I thought, oh my God, there's a whole new dimension available in this. And then I wanted to try and go do it. Um, and Mark, I, like, I feel like you have gone and done it, you know? I mean, your, your work to me is sort of, American 
American weird, American weird. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I think that one thing that's really compelling to me about your work is that there's in the, in the short fiction, they are sort of fantastical and bizarre man and funny. Um, and you also, you also blend fiction and nonfiction in a really a way that's very compelling and exciting to me. And I guess I would love to hear a little bit about the differences in the forms for you. Um, what, what lights you up about each, what the hard part, harder parts are, what the easier parts are. Um, yeah, there's um, the, I, when I did my grad school, it was all fiction and all I wrote was fiction. And then when I left grad school, I wound up writing a memoir that was mixed genre with like nonfiction from my real life. Um, the death of my father in, when I was 17 um, wound up being like the subject matter of this book, but it's mixed with fiction. Uh, because I think that sort of my life was mixed between reality and fiction. I was just concentrating on writing fiction and these were weird worlds. And also the real stuff of life keeps on wanting attention occasionally. I do think that writers, artists of any type are sort of like wounded in a way that they're always healing. Um, and for me, it was to write fiction and sort of get away from it. And then all of a sudden I had to write this real stuff. So I found it incredibly exciting and it almost seemed transgressive to write about my own life. Um, that was new. So writing fiction can be really exciting, but there's a certain protective layer over it where whatever you write about, you can hide behind this uh, word fiction and say like, that didn't happen. Or you can't read into my life because of this. This is, I'm making this up even when things are so strikingly similar to your own life, as soon as you put the word nonfiction or memoir or essay on a piece, you have to announce like, this is me, These, this was an episode and this is how I feel. Um, and I do think that that was really exciting and it felt like brand new territory to get into. I'm not a memoirist, I'm not good at nonfiction or I don't, I don't gravitate toward it, but it was like a transgressive act for me. Um, I do think that for me, I'm a little bit more open and honest in fiction than I am in nonfiction, simply because of that protective distance that you get. Like I can say stuff in fiction that if I said in nonfiction, I would get called out for, you know, by people in my life. Um, and, you know, that sort of happened with my book. Um, but I had to show it to everybody and get their approval. And you've done the same thing. You work in multiple forms, but much more consistently. I did a sort of like mashup crazy thing, but you have worked like purposefully in fiction, in essay form, in a memoir. And how do all these things inform each other? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, it's, it's a little bit different for me. I found writing fiction than what you were saying. For me, I had written a book about my own life, you know, like my actual own very life. Um, and I found that with Wake Siren, this, this book of, of stories based on the metamorphosis, which is like graphic and violent and sexual and wild. Um, I felt way, thank you. Um, I felt way, um, way more exposed with the fiction. It was sort of like, oh, here is this doorway into my private imagination world, um, which felt much more, vulnerable than than writing a true thing about my actual life mm. um uh so i did not i felt i did not feel that protective layer with fiction mm. uh, uh and how they sort of i mean you know essays and and memoir and and fiction i mean i think you know if there is sort of a a, a sort of a thread or a through line through all the work so far i mean it really i mean i don't know i guess i think about um the fact that we all end, you know, like our time here is short. Um, and so it's- Speak for yourself, about, Nina, speak for yourself. <laughs> um, and it's about transformation, you know? I mean, the, the book about being a carpenter was sort of like, I was this one thing and then did this other thing, you know, that there's sort of this ongoing possibility for change. I think that that's, those are the sort of themes that come up in the Summer Solstice book. And that for sure is what um, Wake Siren is about as well. So they, though they all feel different, very different to kind of create. And I think probably the reading experience is um, pretty different. Uh, 
the themes, I don't know if you find this too, like the sort of, like the, the, the sort of driving force thematically sort of stays the same. You find that? The driving force thematically. Um, yeah, one of, one of the questions that we had on here was like, you, um, is, there, is there a thread between everything that you're doing? Um, I think that through everything that I've written, there's been a goal, a more abstract goal of sort of understanding what the hell is going on with everything that I do. And I, under, I think that I only know things or understand what the hell's going on if I write about it, whether it's in a story or in my journal or something like that, or just taking notes. Like I need to see it on the page and like put language to it in many different ways to comprehend what is going on around me or in my life. So I think that with each project, my goal is to grapple with something and understand it better. With the nonfiction that I wrote, like it was to give voice to this part of my life that I've like kept silent. And I wanted to basically understand like why I was doing that and then to maybe stop doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, with each of the like the short stories, there's a there's something that I'm grappling with and I try to invent a way to examine it from another angle instead of just my regular old Mark Planzak doing this thing every single day, I'll invent a character or a situation or a setting or a phenomenon that it doesn't really exist and then look at it. So it's a way to get new perspective every single time. I don't think that I have like one subject matter. I think for a while it was like grief and loss and I didn't know that uh, until I looked back at my stories after a while and then wrote something new. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I wonder, I've got more questions here. How much time do we actually have? I was just gonna say, maybe we, I don't know if the, if the if kids have questions. Yeah, if anybody else has questions, I mean, I could ask Nina questions all day, but I can do that anytime I want. <laughs> um, I think it would be great if, um, especially if students have questions, they can just put it in the chat. I think that might be easier. Um, and then we can kind of take a look at them. Um, so, so that would be great. And then um, if anybody f f feels, while well, we're waiting to see if any questions come in the chat, if you uh, wanted to unmute yourself and ask a question, that would be great too. Yeah, I mean, Alden Mock, if you have anything that you would like to know about literature. Um, in the, in the meantime, I, I think one of the questions that um, has come up, um, I, I teach a class at Nobles called, it's an independent course, it's um, a novel writing course. And so we have um, six students at Nobles that are signed up for the class and working on their novels. And I know something that might be really good for them to hear from you is sort of, how did you talk to your parents about becoming writers? And was that um, a hard conversation? Um, and maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I, my mom still thinks I'm a doctor, <laughs> so we haven't had that talk yet. Um, uh, I mean, I, for, for me, with like talking with like my mom and my family about being a writer, I think my mom, is, my mom loves uh, the stuff that I read, huge support, um, never had any resistance to it. I think that she worried at some point, like, w can, you, can you live? Can you sustain yourself that way? And that, that seemed pretty normal. And I, you know, tried to say like, well, uh, I know that I need to do this. So I'll, it'll just figure itself out if I go after the thing that I like doing. And it has, um, that, was, that was proven true. I just followed it. Uh, but she's been supportive the whole way through. So it wasn't much of a struggle. I just sort of had to navigate that thing. We're like, it'll be okay. I'll figure out a way to buy, like get money to buy food. That was mm -hmm. the hardest part. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I also, I feel lucky too, my family has been supportive. Um, I think they were a little bit less so uh, when I said I was gonna leave my journalism job with health insurance and a regular salary um, to become a carpenter. That made a little bit less sense to them. Um, uh, and it wasn't, it was never like you shouldn't do it, but it was like, are you sure? And like, what about grad school? And, you know, sort of these things that would make sort of a little bit more sense in terms of the tra trajectory I'd already been on. Um, but I think, you know, I mean, it, it is like, if your parents are sort of worried about that, I think that it's just sort of showing that, I don't know, I guess if that's your passion and that's where you truly want to aim your attention, the devotion to it, I don't know, I feel like it will sort of go beyond your parental 
pressures and possible sort of negative feedback from them. Um, let that fire keep you burning. Um, I'm seeing questions in the chat here. Um, was there an erroneous question asked? Yeah, don't, <laughs> I think so. But what, I think, what do I do in my free time? Uh, <laughs> I think um, I think there's two questions here. One is, what was your favorite class you took at Nobles? Um, and the other is, how do you push past writer's block? Ah, uh, I'll, I'm gonna jump in with the writer's block question. I, I, um, I don't believe in it. I think that it's like, it's, I think that's bull. Um, and you just have to keep writing. I mean, it's sort of what I was saying, what Mark, Mark and I were both saying, like, you cannot wait for inspiration. That's, that's hogwash, man. Like, you've just got to keep doing the work. And it is like sitting down when it just feels horrible and you feel like everything you're writing is coming out mud. Your brain feels flat. It's just like, why are you doing this? Like, that's, that's what that's to me is like when you become a writer um, is like working through the times where you're just like, wow, I don't have a single fresh idea. Everything sounds like crap. Um, you just keep going. You have to keep going because you could write 500 words in a day. You could write two paragraphs and like maybe maybe there'll be a phrase that lights up the next day and you think like, OK, yesterday sucked. Like there's that one phrase and that'll take you into a, an entirely different direction. So. Um, yeah, writer's block, no such thing, according to me. I like uh, I like that. I think I think that you can always write something. I think that uh, writer's block. Just I, I totally agree with everything that Nina just said. One thing I would add to it is that I do I do certain like prompts and exercises on those days where it just feels like wow, like you have nothing to say, buddy, uh, and this is not coming out right. I do this with my classes. You do it in your creative writing group, I'm sure. You said that you give out prompts and writing exercises. I will do that stuff just to keep writing, just to like get that stuff out. And I do think that those, those days are still productive because it winds up getting rid of the, 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 getting out some of the things that are in the way of the ideas that are still coming through like the pipeline. Um, eventually, I think inspiration does strike, but it, it to me, it, only happens while I'm writing. Like I'm, I'm never like in the shower and like, ah, story idea. Like I'm in the middle of a story already. And then I get this thing that pops up. I'm like, oh, a word that I wasn't even planning on writing winds up making sense to me. And now I know where the story's supposed to go. Those are the cool moments. Uh, but sometimes it takes like doing the thing of like a free write, just saying like, I'm gonna write garbage for 10 minutes and writer's block will disappear if you just think of writing as writing anything mm -hmm. <laughs> instead totally. of writing something good. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, fa favorite class at Nobles though? Uh, there are a lot of great, I loved my creative writing class with Vicki Seelan uh, and Lily King. I loved the independent study with Mr. Mock and some of my friends. Um, and Sandy McQuinn's short story class was amazing. That's where I read all those short stories and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, well, I, I think that, short, sorry, that short story class still exists. It is a senior elective still. And I think there are some students here that are currently taking it. Amazing class. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too, was with uh, a different teacher. It was a woman named Ash Ashley Massey. Um, that short story class was, was dynamite. I mean, I really love that. Um, uh, my senior year, I took a class with Mr. Baker, um, which was excellent. Um, Dick Baker. I don't know. I don't know if he's still teaching right now. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, um, that was a really memorable class and a really beautiful way to sort of end, sort of close out my time at Nobles. Um, challenging class. Um, uh, gosh, what were some other good ones? I mean, I also. I mean, I mean, I guess looking back to just the sort of. I mean, photo photo classes were amazing. The facilities um, were incredible. Um, you know, I, I worked on the nobleman as well. So that wasn't exactly a class, but I think I, I definitely like, I learned a ton um, working on the newspaper. Uh, that was a really valuable, fun, funny way to sort of spend the time. Does the nobleman still exist? Yep. I'm on the staff, actually. All right, cool. What is your, what is your position? I was a staff writer last year, but I'm a managing editor this year. 
Awesome. Are you thinking about going into journalism? I don't know about journalism. I would really like to be a screenwriter. That's kind of my dream goal. So I'm hoping that's what I'll be pursuing in college, but I do think I'll end up writing for some newspapers. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Is the nobleman in print? We have some online issues, but our most recent one that's coming out soon is going to be print. We've had a bit of a variety this year. Oh, uh, okay. Um, any other um, questions from anyone? And then I think I'll turn it over to Kate to see if you want to. Um... Yeah, I'm. I'm just going to thank everyone for coming. I know um, it's a you know day that you kind of want to be inside. So thank you to Mark and Nina for joining us, and um, also to our graduates and um students for joining us as well this is really fun i wrote down a couple of tidbits and i think i'm probably not the only one who's gonna go and like find some time today to write um really inspired by what you both shared so thank you so much um fantastic all right Gia. well i will close it out i think the students have to get to their next activity and mark and nina thank you so much this was really thank great thank you guys thank you this was so much fun. really really good